Uh, hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Carly Boy and welcome to my demonstration video of the new software that I've just created. Um, you probably are familiar with the Tetra network which is used among uh, most of the Europe for let's say internal services uh, uh, intercommunication instead of uh, simple analog broadcasts and uh, Tetra stands for Trunked Radio something and um, in my country it's used for municipal police and uh, Say, um, fire uh, fighters and ambulances, stuff like that. Uh, there is a software, T Life, for which I would like to thank my colleague from Poland uh, that he kindly created. But that uh, unfortunately only works in Linux, and uh, he himself stated that uh, he doesn't intend to port it on Windows, so I took the liberty of doing that since uh, his search codes were free. And uh, now let me show you how it works. So first you need to feed, uh, feed the software with the data from the RTL SDR receiver and you are going to use the GNU Radio Companion for that which thankfully has been ported to Windows and works flawlessly now. So let me just start it up. Alright, there it is. Um, so this is a project that I've, uh, that I've created from his original six channel project I've actually managed to tune ten channels at once with my computer so that's that and um, I'm going to start it right away it actually stays headless but I've added this little FFT thing so I can see what's actually happening on the channels so this is the first step now we have the data that we're going to be feeding uh, to the next part and as you can see I've already added the CQPS key demodulation into the chain so uh, that's a modification that you need to do to GNU radio so that you have this box in here and uh, the instructions are uh, in the description of the video down and now we are going to open MSYS, which is basically something like SIGWIN, which allows you to run uh, Linux applications uh, under Windows. And I took the liberty of uh, compiling and porting the Tetra RX, uh, also the modificated version. And I have a nice script that, mu that MUXES uh, 10 channels for me on 10 UDP ports and uh, adds that into TMUX, which is something like screen, but it works under MSYS. That basically means I'm going to have 10 instances of this software running in the background. As you can see here, I got these windows. So this is for channel 1, 2, etc. So let me just open this. Alright, so we have this. We have this. And now we're, go we're going to open my software, which is the Minty Life. And um, here you just enter the, the RPC port that you are going to connect to which is uh, the instance of the Genie Radio its port of course and the port we are going to listen on uh, the data that are going to be sent from these instances and here we have frequency range uh, usually it's uh, from 200, uh, sorry, 420 to 430 megahertz but uh, I found out that it's more like this in my country so let's, let's set it uh, to more precise values and click connect here and you're going to have these nice windows and uh, these are the receivers that you have opened in the Genie Radio Companion so I have 10 of them these are the frequencies that the software has seen so far and these are the USIs that have been encountered in the broadcast and here you have a graph that uh, represents uh, the visualization of the frequency spectrum it actually should be something like uh, what we have here but since all the receivers are now disabled you don't see any data so let's click any of them and do an all scan which will basically swipe through all the, all the spectrum and detect all active channels and already we are detecting some frequencies the dark green, uh, da dark blue are the ones that have uh, all the data while the light blue are the ones that are only used as separate uh, auxiliary channels okay so we swipe through the spectrum so let's see I think around here is going to be the most channels that we want to tune so I'm going to tune the baseband into oh what the fuck okay 
426 I think there we go and uh, now I simply click to new and that is going to take all the channels that are inside the baseband and tune them to the free receivers that we have here like this and already we are getting some data it looks like that the channel one is giving me uh, I mean the receiver one is getting giving me a lot of gibberish so I'm just going to turn it off And now we'll simply wait for some data to arrive. As you can see the numbers here, these are the receivers that are assigned to the frequencies that are, um, that are displayed there. These tables are going to be dynamically updated with the new arriving, or let's say, encountered SSIs displayed here. And uh, LAs and CCs are basically assigned to the to the frequencies. Most of them are going to have a lot of them. So I think I'm just going to cut this video until we receive some uh, more interesting signal. Yeah, so as you can see we are listening to live Tetra radio this is actually the municipal police probably checking some stranger on the street so um, I guess I can just uh, can just turn the volume down and um, what this actually does, it actually records all the audio that happens on the channels and stores it as a WAV files. Um, the software is actually pretty intelligent about uh, managing of the of the free channels, as you can see here. The channel 8 that was tuned to something um, that was turned off because there was no burst of signal received uh, received on it. And um, if you double click the baseband frequency it will center the frequency so that the channels that are being tuned are best contained it basically takes the the outer frequencies and centers the the baseband to into the middle of them so that you get the optimal coverage of the signal uh, by double clicking the frequency you can manually change the frequency of, uh, of the receivers by double clicking the state you can switch the, their mode from off to tuned to all scan which will switch all of the receivers to band scan which is an interesting feature I'm going to show you um, let's see yeah let's use this one because it's already off and what the band scan does it is basically going to walk through all of the spectrum and search for new channels it is not going to receive any data I mean, it is going to receive data, but those are not going to be shown here because uh, because the receiver is dedicated for the scanning. But if it encounters any new frequency, it will be listed here. Uh, so it's actually the, the, the optimal way of uh, finding channels while you are already listening to some. This is only going to cycle through the through the already tuned baseband, so you are, the signals are not going to be shifted elsewhere. And what else is there? The tune new button or the auto tune new checkbox. Those are actually doing the same thing. And what that does is that uh, it tries to tune as many channels that you see around the baseband as possible with uh, with losing as few channels that are already tuned as possible so let's say that uh, if I click it now the free receivers the 7, the 9 and the 10 are going to be tuned to some of these frequencies that are around here but I'm not going to do that now because we've already proven that these, uh, these channels are dead even though they have been listed and uh, here in this window you are basically getting the SDS messages uh, in their raw form 
Uh, I'm not displaying any additional data like the location of the cell or stuff like that, but that might change later. So um, yeah, I hope you like it because um, I'm receiving as an open source, which means that you can get a source code for this little baby uh, on my GitHub. And um, if you're interested in a little technical details, I'm using an audio library for handling the audio. And the advantage of that is that I can actually listen to all of the receivers at once. So if there's going to be like a simultaneous traffic on multiple receivers, you are going to listen to all of it at once. Uh, later on, um, I'm going to add a feature where you can disable this and uh, switch it to single listening mode where you'll only be listening to one channel at a time so you don't get disturbed by the people talking across each other. And I'm also using a custom built uh, DLL library for decoding the ASLP codec. Uh, again, the, the source code for the ASAP codec is freely available, so what I just did is compiled it in uh, Visual Studio uh, as a library, which I uh, link then into my Vinti Live Monitor executable. Uh, pretty much the same way as I link the NLDO library. So yeah, I guess this is all. You can just uh, close the main window, which is going to kill all the process. And then just uh, you know, control C all of these instances of the receivers until we get the bash, which we can just exit, and then simply stop uh, the genie radio.